here we thank you for sharing your evening with me i'm jb bryan the chief investment officer and president of jb bryan financial group the home of afro economics <laughs> i should do that every week and make it longer and longer right dr hicks good evening to you i'll be like the home of afro economics yes indeed it's about being happy and i'm not faking it no i don't believe i don't believe in faking it till you make it because those that's one of the things that cause stress you should check out one of my um podcasts that it's about you know make it never fake it don't believe the hype if you don't have it don't act like you have it you have absolutely nothing to prove to anyone else no we don't so i'm gonna look at i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna look at my notes and i'm gonna um, share with you some information that i have about 10 ideas that i think that can help you be financially happy now and financially happy in the future so let's check this out a record number of retirees are saying that they're not at all satisfied with retirement. According to MarketWatch, which cited a study from the Employee Benefit Research Institute, that retirees who were completely dissatisfied with retirement has increased, has increased to double digits, completely dissatisfied. The number of survey respondents who would describe their retirement as very satisfying went down. Yep, I guess that makes sense. If the people unsatisfied has gone up, the people who are satisfied has gone down since the 90s. While the survey didn't pinpoint a cause for the dip, I want you to tell me what you think the cause for the dip might be, all right? Right now, you can inbox or uh, make sure you chat back to me, everybody in the webinar, what, or make comments if you're looking at the recording. Why do you think that people are less happy during their retirement now? Other research suggests that some of the unhappiness may stem from financial woes. Whoa, financial problems. Isn't that crazy? It's really sad to think you do not want to grow old and be unhappy and sad and stressing. You know, it's like, when is it going to stop? You've got to do, we've got to make some moves now so that our retirement is not an even more stressful experience. It said, uh, 10 years ago, a study found that receiving payments from a pension was positively correlated to retirement satisfaction, a pension. But, hey, we all know this, the number of retirees drawing from traditional pensions has gone down, right? Salaried workers, this is salaried people, who are non-government salaried workers who receive a traditional pension has fallen from 38% in the 90s to less than 20%, right? And that could be, in my opinion, connected to the decline in retirement satisfaction, as well as the research suggests that. People like to know that they have money. People like to know exactly how much money they have. People, and you know, and I argue that a lot because even though, you know, people love to see how much things have made and how much they could make, it come, when it comes down to it, people want to see, make sure, especially our people, because we know the pains of poverty, too many of us that we want to know that I'm gonna have what I got. Can I keep what I got? How do I maintain what I got? And that's the challenge of it because you can't continue to live the way you live and spend all your money. So you can't be so tight on your money. And I'm going a different direction. 
because I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to my points, but I just want to let you know that we can't be so afraid that we don't outpace inflation. And that's what happens. So you get too conservative. So you just say, I'm just going to put it all in the bank or I'm just going to get this CD and I'm going to do, you know, I'm, you know and, he, and he, fear comes in and the, your, your good sense goes out the window. We have to have growth potential. And, and, and instead of thinking about your spending, you think about, the, you know, you worry about the return. But how about with worrying about your withdrawal rate? If you're taking out 10% of your money every year for your retirement, how can we outpace that when you know from the beginning of the S&P 500, historically, 100 years ago, to now the average, average over all that time has only been 10%. So how are you going to outpace the cost of living and pull out such a dramatic amount of money? That's what we have to think about. So what can we do so that we don't have to spend our money so aggressively during retirement? What can we do so that, um, that we're more confident during our retirement? I'm going to check on you all because I'm, I'm just talking and now, oh, yes. So what can we do? What, 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 what do you say? What does Ethel say? Health, um, financial, health, political, the internet. <laughs> Look, you answered the question when I got to it. Now I'm looking at it because I went on talking. I don't know what the question was. <laughs> it was like, what I think it was, why are people unhappy? And I, um, right? The reason for dissatisfaction. Thank you. Thank you, Ethel. Yes, indeed. The reason for um, dissatisfaction, exactly. You said you hit it, financial. You, I mean, well, no, that's part of it. Just like you said, financial, health, political. They're worried that they're going to run out of money. Dr. Hicks, good point. The internet, come on now, tell me more about that. You think the internet has made retirees unhappy? You know what? It could be true. They could be like, surfing the internet all the time. And then they're just not really thinking about um, the right things or they don't have really good relationships anymore. Cause if, you know, anything is possible, but hey, I received that. And then a Anderson said, your retirement money must grow. Yes, indeed, must grow. Rhonda said, not being prepared is why they're unhappy. I know that's right. It is real. Y'all are so good. Look at y'all. Who Raise your hand if you're willing to make me happy and come on camera with me like Rhonda did on Saturday when we did Afroeconomics Lifestyle. So if anybody, raise your hand, please let me know because I will come after you, Getty Group. I will come after you and put you on camera right there. Yes, I will, girlfriend. <laughs> Pop you up, Dr. Williams, just like that. Yes, you'll have to grab your camera and stop it. But yes, if you would like to, I would love for you to say your comments on camera. It just adds to it, adds to the recording. 20 years from now, you'll be looking on the YouTube channel saying, wow, yeah, those of you who are on the phone, I know you want to be on there. You can't, you can't because you're on the phone. But next time, oh yes, at the, in your pajamas, that's even better. Afroeconomics in the comforts of your home. <laughs> Rhonda's, even Rhonda's laying down today. No, I'm coming at them. <laughs> so let me continue with my points, y'all. Right? With the with the with the points of so what do I suggest? Some tips to be financially happy now and later. I believe that we have to make it personal. An important part of a happy life, I believe, is to forget about the right way to do things. I believe that we have to say that my life is unique and these are the things I need to do that are important to me. And that's, that's what I love about our personal meetings when you're a member and you do the comprehensive financial planning level of membership that you're able to personalize your financial goals. You were able to work on what is specifically for you. You don't come in and it's like, okay, well, this is our checklist. This is what you should be doing. You know, 
No, the right way is the way you want to do it. Some financial decisions are generally better than others. Yes, they are. But many things in personal finance depend on you. After all, economics, even the book is about you filling in what is important to you. Each of the principles are principles, but the principles are basic and they wrap around you. There isn't one specific method of how to make this work for you because entrepreneurship is the seventh principle, but everybody won't be an entrepreneur like I'm an entrepreneur, but everybody can get that entrepreneurship mindset. When you have a job that has a business, that has a bonus, they're asking you to have an entrepreneur mindset as an employee of that company, to, to, to spend their money, to work your budget, to encourage and support and, and work your position like it's your own business. So entrepreneurship, all the principles apply to your life uniquely in the place that you want them to be, right? So make it personal. Make your financial life very personal. This is how I do things. Don't beat yourself up. Um, I want to, you know, if you say you want to retire at a specific age and your friends are retiring at a different time, you know, then you do that. And I've had to adopt that. You know, I've had to adopt that, that, you know, there's not a lot of people that I grew up with that are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And they might retire a lot before, uh, way before I do. I just hope that they'll allow me to help them <laughs> manage their finances. The, you know, that I hope that they will, you know, but if the, you know, but the, the point is that they're going to be out of work. They're going to be retired. I'm still going to be working. And that's why I focus a lot on what is my personal goal? What do I want to do? I love my work. I love what I'm doing. I don't think thinking about work. This is just my life. This is just my lifestyle. I have a Afro-economics lifestyle. It is the core of me. But many people are waiting to get out of that job. And they can make it personal what they want to do on that next step. But if you personalize it right now, wherever you are in life, that I have the right to make and create my right way of doing things. And then my second point is to invest in you. Invest in you before you invest in anything else. Before you talk to me about what, how, how I should do this um, investment portfolio or when and this and that. Invest in you. Invest in your knowledge. Invest in your education. Invest in your health. Invest in you know um, everything that's going to develop you as a person and give you more value to provide to your business, to invite, to provide to your employer, to provide to your family. Invest in you and on every level, spiritually, mentally, physically, every level. Invest in you first. My third, and that's. I believe that investing in you is going to help you be happy. A third point is to earn income. Earn income doing something that you enjoy before, while you're working, before you retire. Do, you know, when you're working, make sure it's something that you enjoy doing. When you retire, if you need additional income, do something that you enjoy. Do something that makes you happy. You know, you deserve, you deserve that. That, 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 uh, that's, a, it's, it's amazing that you love your people. I do. Yes, indeed. Happy people live longer or retired longer. People live longer or retired longer. Is that what you're saying, Terrence? That's what I meant by the internet. Too busy watching other people. I know that's right. I know that's right. How you doing, Don? That's indeed. Everything gets better now. My love of my life has spoken to me. So, hey, <laughs> I'm happy to. <laughs> it's a good night. But definitely the internet, people too busy looking at, you know, just trying to keep up with the Joneses through this fictitious life. 
instead of focusing on themselves. They're comparing themselves to fictitious lives. And they, um, I, I saw some research and it said that the greatest fear now is the fear of what other people think. Mm. So that, you know, if they're trying to keep up with other people because they're afraid of the other people thinking that they're broke or, you know, that um, they have to, they think they have to retire because they don't want anybody to think that they need the money or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, that fear of what other people think, that's really sad. And then um, my third point was earning income from doing things you enjoy. A fourth point is, uh, I believe in the new school budget. Yeah, that, you know, having a budget, but it's the new school way. I believe that a budget is just a tool to help you spend money on the things that you want to spend money on. You know, it's a, your budget shouldn't be because I have categories on the sheet or categories are in the software that you have to have something in every category. You get scratched that whole thing and this is your category. You know that you don't, you, you know, you don't, if they, if people have different values and we need to say that that's okay, but that is your budget. Budget according to what you want to have. You want to have a telephone, you want to have lights on, Hey, if you don't want lights on, you ain't got to worry about it. Hey, do you, right? That new school budget, but we have to have it. A fifth point is learning to live below our means for long-term financial success. Below. If you regularly are spending all of your money or more than the money that you make, you can't expect to grow any savings. So living below our means works in tandem with the decision of the new school budget. Your budget tells you how much money you have and how much you can spend every day, every week, every month. Then you can work with that number, that, 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 that number, and it will allow you not to overspend so that you can live below that. So if you said living below your means, but you don't really have a budget, so you don't really know, how are you going to live below your means if you don't even know your means, right? Or even within your means, because you're spending whatever you want because you're swiping the credit card or you finance everything. You know, it's like, oh, well, they'll let me finance it. I want new furniture. Oh, they'll let me finance it. I want, you know, I, I, I want, I want, I'll just put that on my Nordstrom's card. Oh, they'll let me finance it. You know, and you feel like you have money, but you don't. You're financing everything. And so that, ultimately will make you unhappy. So we want to live below our means and learn to really like not attach our joy to things, to titles, to stuff, to anything. Our joy has to be bigger than that. And remember the soul of our money, the fifth principle of Afroeconomics that we focus on on Sunday, because, you know, to help our life, our, have our peaceful joyful financial life that's guided by more than what other people think, guided by more than what we think we're supposed to do. You know, some people go out and get big mortgages because they think that's what they're supposed to do. And they're only using a small portion of the whole home, but they're paying for 4,000 square feet and they only use 1,000 square foot of it. So then they can't save. And then as they get older and older, that house, you know, becomes a burden to them. And they put everything into it. And the only time, this is just an example, but the only way to get their money back out is they have to do another loan to get the money out or sell it. And then you got to live somewhere. So you haven't saved enough. You haven't saved because you would have saved more, but you had to spend so much. Everything went into the house. Woo, right? Pay now or later, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. So we're going to do things to create long-term peace and joy. Right. And then I think of number six as call for backup, <laughs> your emergency fund. Having an emergency fund is a way to protect yourself from the unexpected. There's always a chance that you could 
lose your job. Now, this is before you retire. When you retire, you know, the, most likely you're going to have some form of guaranteed income, you know, if, even if it's just Social Security. And a lot of people retire or are living off of Social Security. And there's billions of dollars each year that are taken from Social Security checks to pay back school loans that were not paid back. Yep, seniors using losing their social security because of school loans that weren't paid. So don't feel like, oh, I'll get back to that school loan later. And you keep pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. They only let you do that from a government loan. They let you do it because they know they're going to get it if you live. So yeah, uh, so maybe need um, to make a big car repair or uh, you had to take a, a, a trip unexpectedly because a family member dies, you know, and it's a thousand dollar plane ticket to get there. Uh, the um, you need to have an emergency fund to cover um, at least three months of just your living expenses, so that you can, um, if, if if something were to happen, you could get through at least ninety days, even for like long term care insurance coverage. Uh, as as a senior that um, and something happens, you have to cover for those first 90 days before even the insurance policy would begin to pay out. And I have one client that it took so long for this insurance company that they had their policy with to pay out that her husband had passed away because it took so many months for them to approve to pay out the long-term care policy. So what you need to be careful of is if you think, oh, I'll, you, I'll have this insurance, I really don't need an emergency fund, you need to get the full definition of how much they can torture you in order to get your money. And those are the things that we talk about when I do insurance analyses and comparing one policy to another and everything, because we do uh, a, a lot of insurance in our culture and um, we, are typically spend too much and don't have the proper protection that we need. And we need to be careful of that. Ms. Witherspoon said, I've been trying to build my emergency, but I keep having to spend it. I need to do something different. I know that's right. That that's, you know, m most, most people, you know, and, you know, sometimes people have, you know, um, you know, children, sometimes people are married, they're not married, you know, they, if you're married, then you need to, you know, really have double emergency fund, you know, to have one because if you if your bills are depending on two incomes, you know, and if a single person, you know, you really know that we need to have it. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, be be aware uh, that it is something to to really focus on, and in between time, you can make sure you always have an emergency, um, have a credit card that has a line of credit available. So if you have a credit card, you can't use it if you want that to be your backup emergency money. You know, for getting the car fixed if it breaks down, you can't use it. Indeed. How did Delia blog in? You're so good. That's the producer. She got in there. See, look, she, she wanted to feel included because she couldn't get in. She couldn't get in. She's like, wrote, look, look, wrote notes. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. She's like, I'm going to have to use my personal cell phone. What is, make sure. Yes, indeed. That's a good producer, right, y'all? So, <laughs> so let's look at, so we talked about um, calling for backup, having your emergency fund. What about debt freedom? Debt will always make it difficult to reach financial stability. Debt freedom, debt freedom. I mean, we're really not supposed to be in debt. You know, we just live in a society that benefits more by us being in debt. You know, imagine how many people, how much financial institutions make off home mortgages. They make a so much more off home mortgages than the homeowners are making off having the house as an asset. <laughs> I don't know, but I would love to run the numbers on that because I feel pretty confident about that because residential real estate really hasn't done that well. So if they get you to put the money in and they invest in something other than your house, they can do better than you.
if they're investing effectively. So <laughs> once you know how much that you need to be spending, you got your new school budget set up, you got your emergency fund in place, we have to focus on getting rid of debt, paying off those credit cards, you know, uh, making sure that if you, once you have the credit cards all taken care of, making extra payments on those school loans and getting them knocked out. I mean, it's paying them off sooner than later will help you and save you a lot of money in interest. So, you know, um, take debt freedom seriously. Take um, going into debt seriously. I think that we need to do a better job talking to our young people about school loan debt. You know, um, I mean, what would you all think? I think, you know, people just let their kids go into $200,000, $300,000 in school loan debt, and they don't say, you know what, um, this is a lot of debt. You know, let me equate that to you um, are going to come out and make blah, blah, blah. The average blah, blah, blah makes this amount of money. So it, if you don't, if even after taxes, you're going to come home, this, it will take you blah, blah, blah years if you give all your money back to this loan to pay this back. Maybe we need to figure out another way. Mr. Graham said, unexpected things happen, like the shutdown. You're right. <laughs> it feels like it's so far behind us. But it was just a, a few weeks ago that the government was on furlough. You're so right. How can you plan for that contingency? And um, I guess I went into that, like with having, you know, the credit card of balance available, if for nothing else, and making sure that you start saving immediately on having that emergency fund. That's a good point. I mean, that was amazing how many people, you know, really had run out of money. They're like, we cannot miss. And then, you know, I mean, research says a lot of people are one paycheck away from losing a lot. So plan, plan for a future after the job. Plan for financial independence. I, I think it's bigger than saying plan for retirement, but plan for financial independence. Because just that I say I want to work a long time, that doesn't mean that it's not important to me to be financially independent. I don't want to have to work. I want to be here because I love being here. And I'm going to tell you, becoming debt-free really made my time with you so much better. It really did. And, and, and then being an entrepreneur is still stressful without the debt. So imagine how stressful it is not knowing, you know, what your, where your next uh, client is coming from. If you, you know, if this client is going to come through, if this deal is going to come through, what, you know, how, how are you going to gather more assets? You know, uh, what's going to happen? Imagine that. Just like people, you know, plumber, same concept. What if nobody calls you about getting their new home built and doing the plumbing in the house? What if nobody calls you to repair, you know, their toilet? What if nobody calls you, you know, to, to do whatever? It, yeah. So we have to always be conscious of it is important to be, in, 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 to be financially independent, even if you say, well, I'll just work, I'll, I'll be a plumber forever. I don't have to ever retire. No, but there is a time where you are not going to, want to work as hard as you do and people are not even going to want you to do it you might not be able to climb uh, go up under homes as the way you usually do so we have to prioritize our future and having financial independent at minimum just don't go into debt retirement money that's needed is based on lifestyle demands that you've created if you don't have to have this luxurious lifestyle full of luxuries, then you can retire a lot earlier or at least be financially independent, right? <laughs> Financial independence doesn't have to be a multi-billionaire, you know, because there's a whole bunch of multi-millionaires and billionaires who are file bankruptcy. They're more financially independent. No, they just, 
you know, were not purchasing the assets or the assets went down. Did you see that? They were talking, I didn't even um, follow up on it. But uh, before the market opened, there was an expectation that Weight Watchers was going to go down by $50 million, you know, and they were talking about like, it's headed to the price of which Oprah made her initial investment into Weight Watchers, which, you know, I was never feeling anyway, but the, um, hey, people do what they want to do. She should have called me. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that Willie would have paid off a lot more for her, a lot more. So then, um, so what about make sure that, and this is my ninth point, and I like this, make sure you laugh more than you cry or frown, right? We need to laugh more, laugh more to have the happy life. Like, I think that a lot of times we spend money on trying to buy fun, buy laughter, buy joy, you know, that if, if, we can just say that, you know what, this, this, it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. All I have to do is just prioritize fun like I did when I was a kid. You know, that we don't have to. You can just take a walk, take a hike, invite your friends, have a home game night, you know, save money and make it fun, increase your health, you know, and celebrate your financial success of staying within your budget for that month, you know, and <laughs> celebrate it with everybody just bringing something that they want to eat themselves. But like, let's figure out a way where we can have fun without having to mess up our budget and not, um, and, but have more fun, have more joy, have more relaxation, have, have, you know, just, just have more good. No. Right. So um, definitely, and I, I want to um, share my thought. I can't believe it, y'all. I apologize. I ran over the, um, the yes. Oh, some, oh, I'm going to go back. I apologize for that. Yes. When a lot of happy comes, a lot of happy. Yes, indeed, Terry. A lot of happy comes from within. Yes. <laughs> yes. And my final point is to be determined and that's the ninth principle of Afroeconomics. Be determined to be financially happy. You know, I believe that misery is a choice that too many of us choose. And, and, even the, and, and I have seen, you know, people have tremendous opportunities and lots of money and still be unhappy. So I don't believe that it is the pension that made people happy. You know, that, you know, that even though they see it, but I believe that there's miserable people with a pension and there's happy people with a pension. And some people with a pension or not are just still going to be miserable. And some people without a pension have decided that they're going to be happy and they're going to uh, learn to uh, they save and create their own pension, which we can easily do. We can create pensions through using annuities. We can create a guaranteed income in so many ways now. You can build over time through your individual retirement accounts your own individual pension. Yes, you can. You can build a business that creates income for you for the rest of your life that exceeds any pension payment that anybody else is getting, and you own it. Yes, you can. So... I believe that it is, that joy, peace, peace of mind is a personal choice. And we have to be determined to stick to our plan and know that things are not going to always go well, but we are going to make sure that every day we do better and we give more and we learn and we grow and we protect our health and we're happy and we're determined and we're focused. But if you would like to talk to me about your plan to be financially happy, just email me, jb at jbbryan.com. Rhonda says she loves the principles, and that's beautiful. Make sure that you, you know, take advantage of it. You sign up, you're a no excuse even member, the free membership. You can go in and download the e-book. Or, or get the book, <laughs> the book itself, at a tremendous discount, no matter what your membership levels. 
So the point is, I want everybody on the planet to have a bull. You know, so definitely look at our events calendar. We have a lot of stuff coming up. We got um, events coming up in um, April. Women's history, um, women's a women's event and health event. And oh, and this weekend it's women's history. Does the book come in hardback? Yes, that's hardback. <laughs> You see how the paper is harder than the inside paper. <laughs> I do need to find out. I don't know if anybody, but I would look at the left. <laughs> it's hard paper. But um, I would like to find it because I would like to have it myself in like a hard bag. So I, I can definitely get it made. They would definitely it would just, you know, cost more, but we can definitely get it. I should get a couple. I'm going to do that. Do you like oh, she is too? Yes, I am. You got me started. It would be Rhonda, right? Yeah, thinking a thing, trying to make me spend my money. See that? I feel just like that. Went off budget. Yeah, I need hard that. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you all so much. Hi, hi, DeBerry, Demetrius. How you doing, Demetrius? Hi, how you doing? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you, Jenny? Happy birthday, Jenny Jones. Yes, indeed. You sassy and sassy, sassy. It's my girl. How you doing, Luanda? Yes, indeed. Well, I am so delighted that you all shared, and I hope that you are happier than you were when you started. I promise you that I do exercise. I walk like I talk. I exercise all of those things that we talked about tonight. Simple as they are, some people make them very hard. Commit to it that you can do it, and you deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I'm not sure who Anderson is. We got a lot of Andersons. We got we got Frank and Billy. We got we got Maurice. We got <laughs> Luther. Oh, it's Frank. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I appreciate you all. Hope to see y'all tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. Ronald, I'm praying for um, your your mother-in-law. Val, uh, uh, please know that we at Afroeconomics are praying for you, and um, we're sorry for your loss of your mother. We feel you. And it was just last year this time you all were walking me through losing my dad. So we know how it is. All right, you all. Have a good one. Blessings, and don't forget, check out Sunday, The Soul of Your Money. And um, we're going to talk about uh, women's, for Women's History Month, I'm talking about Martha and Mary. Mm, are you a Martha or are you a Mary? <laughs> Let's see. Take care, y'all. Have a wonderful one. Bye-bye.